I greet you in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Lillian Karinga and I'm born again. Christ is King and Lord of my life. Let us begin our devotion this morning with a word of prayer. Almighty God, in Jesus' name, we worship you, we glorify your name, and we thank you for your goodness and your love. As we reflect from your word this morning, we pray, dear God, that you will inspire us in accordance to your will. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, today we continue with our series on the divine outpouring. Today looking at the outpouring of God's love. And we look at, where, uh, we will continue from where we left Yesterday, looking uh, at, chap at Acts chapter 2, from verse 5 to 12. Acts chapter 2, from verse 5 to 12. The Bible says, Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speak speaking, in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Philia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? The word of the Lord. Indeed, uh, we are grateful to God that we are able to reflect on these important subjects. And we know that uh, divine outpouring, amongst other things that we will be reflecting on this week, is a demonstration of God's love. You realize that you cannot separate God's presence from his love. Yesterday we took time to see how it is that God demonstrated his presence, the fact that he was there, present with the disciples at that particular time. He demonstrated that in different ways as we looked at yesterday. But that presence, we cannot separate it from God's love because God himself is love and his presence carries his love. The reason why he even bothers or takes time to demonstrate himself or to reveal himself to people who are sinners is because of the fact that he loves them. The reason why God comes to make his dwelling in us and among us is because of him, his immense love for all of us. He's willing to move heaven and earth to be with us. One of my favorite verses in the Bible are from Psalm 18, where in response to the cry of his servant, God responds so dramatically to that cry of petition and prayer. And we are told that with smoke rising from his nostrils, parting the heavens and coming down in order to scatter the enemies. In response to our need for a savior, 
God parted the heavens and came down, humbling himself as a man to purchase our redemption. When we needed a helper, a counselor, a divine enabler, he parted the heavens and sent his spirit to journey with us in all aspects of life. If you have any doubt of God's love, yearn for God's outpouring of his Holy Spirit because it reminds us that we are truly loved. The text we have read demonstrates to us that indeed God shows no favoritism. The power, the presence and manifestation of the Holy Spirit is not a preserve of a few. He is available to all. God does not discriminate along religious or ratio or class lines. He wills that all may come to the knowledge of him through salvation in Christ. And so when he came upon the disciples with power, that demonstration of God's presence, that demonstration of God's love was not only apparent to the disciples who had a more close connection with the Holy Spirit through Christ, but it also became apparent to people who represented all other nations, just to remind us that God wills to reveal himself to all. Just like John chapter three, verse 16 tells us that for God so loved the world. And so he does not wish that any would perish. And that's why he takes the trouble to make himself known to all. He therefore includes all in the salvation plan and the salvation message and everyone that had gathered at this particular time from different tongues and tribes, had the disciples declaring the wonders of God in their own languages and tongues. And they began to wonder what it all meant. So God took time to demonstrate himself to these people they wondered what it all meant. And the response was actually up to them. When God chooses to reveal himself to us in different ways, the response is left up to us. And so God desires to speak to us in a language we can understand because he loves us. And this morning it is my prayer that you will seek to listen, to listen keenly and intentionally for God, to listen to him and trust that he will minister to you according to his will and pray that you will be able to respond as he would have you do. And one of the best way to take a listen to God is looking at his word and hearing what it is that he has got to say. And then just like the disciples experienced, we can see the words of scripture coming alive in our hearts and in our minds by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is my prayer that that will be your portion, that you will know God's love as revealed to us by the Holy Spirit of God, and that you will hear him speak to you in a language that you can understand. Almighty God, we bless your holy name because you love us intensely 
and intently. Thank you, Lord, because you have good plans for us. It is our prayer that we will not miss out on your demonstration of love in our lives. Just like you did for the disciples and all those that were gathered, it is our prayer that beyond wondering what certain things in our lives may mean, we pray that we will find your voice, we will find your counsel in the circumstances around us and hear what you have got to say in a language that we can understand. Minister to all of us, O oh Lord, because we know that you have good plans for us. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.